love this movie. I hate this movie. I love you. I hate you. That's what we're discussing here today on what the hell is this really? Well, think about it. The Last Jedi just came out, and there were a bunch of different criticisms. There was love. There was a very, I don't know what, passionate. We'll say a passionate discussion all across social media, everywhere. This is what happened. We decided to have a discussion here between maybe some of the people who thought exactly the same as some of the naysayers, maybe felt exactly the same as some of the, uh, the the light side, if you will, the dark side. And then there's just some facts and factual stuff. And I'm going to start there because I have a full panel here. Let's do a wide shot. Here's everybody on the panel. You got Mark Kellis, you got Perry Nemiroff, John Roca is here. But I want to start, stop that clapping. I want to <laughs> I want to start with Perry Nemiroff. P. Nimi, give me a little bit here of kind of what exactly, what are we dealing with as far as facts? I guarantee you the second you said facts, everybody out there is like, oh, Perry's going to deliver all that. Because obviously I am the fact and data person. Right. Also, it should uh, be pointed out that this is a spoiler heavy video. Mm -hmm. So just in case you haven't seen the movie. Snoke dies. There's <laughs> spoilers. Oh wow. Right, well, that's and a spoiler. And there it is. It's a spoiler in the title. And it's there not like even the fifth biggest one in the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you tuned out the second I said spoiler, because now all that went to shit. Um, yeah. We're going to be swearing so, in this bit as well. Right. No. Back to those all-important facts, though. Right. So right now, Luke as says. we are recording this video, the movie has a 93% from critics on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's got a 56% from audiences what? voting on it on Rotten Tomatoes. So that may seem like, oh, critics love it, but all fans hate it. That is not necessarily true because the issue that we run into with the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and also that rating scale on IMDb, where actually it's got a higher score, it's got a 7.9 out of 10, but in both cases, it's not like the critics score where critics are vetted before they're allowed to participate in the tomato meter. Anybody can create multiple accounts and insert so many scores. And apparently, according to a Deadline article, there's some sort of uh, group, I believe it's on Facebook, that, that's basically claiming to have bots that are spamming these types of things and message boards and YouTube comment sections and all that. So I think the issue we're running into here, which is why there's such a big gap between the fan score and the critic score, might have something to do with maybe a vocal minority who is putting in the extra effort to make this happen. And I'm not saying that their opinions aren't valid, but the reason why we have such a wide gap and we might be discussing this right now might not be, be because the average is actually accurately portraying how many fans hated the movie. Sure, I'm gonna start off here with the gray Jedi side of things, okay? And I'm gonna take both the dark side and the light side into account. I think that to just say that it's, and I'm not, I know Perry, you're not saying this, but just mm -hmm. to, to maybe suggest that maybe it's just bots that are doing this. No, maybe a lot of people just hated this movie. I mean, that's, that is definitely possible. Um, and maybe probable, to be honest, when you look at some of the things that happen in this film. Now, when I went to see this movie the first time, I had to sit back and I had to think about it before I gave any type of opinion whatsoever because as a Star Wars hardcore fan, I had to process it. There were things I didn't like the first time I saw it, and honestly, I still don't like. Um, Canto Bite being one of those things, some of the jokes and humor being another one of those things. But however, the second time I saw it, I actually wound up loving things that I just thought I liked the first time. The stuff with Luke and his journey and how it ultimately plays in. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to see that type of Luke Skywalker. And then I thought how kind of how poetically it was done, I wound up enjoying it. So I took both sides of it. And of course, I was bashed for the fact that I went up a full point on my, on my review, but that's the way I felt. So I don't give a shit what other people think about what I think. But there are also things that you should also, if you hate this movie, you should hate the movie. If you love the movie, you should love the movie. But I think that it is, there's a way that everybody can kind of coexist inside of that. But there are points of view that I think should be explored. But the statistical aspect you have about this, is why it's creating such an uproar is how seriously people take the Rotten Tomatoes number. Right. The IMDb one doesn't matter. Why? Because nobody takes IMDb ratings seriously. We don't take cinema score into account. The cinema score for Last Jedi is an A. I think it's the core score, the con score. It's another thing that measures audience favor, and that also is an A. So if you have a Rotten Tomatoes number that is so oddly low, I don't attribute that to saying, well, a lot of Star Wars fans did hate the movie. I do attribute
attribute that to a number of people who felt mobilized after seeing it, whether they loved the movie, hated the movie, or they just hated specific scenes in the movie, that they are the ones that are going to bind together and say, we need to go get on this one site. Because it does take some legwork to get onto Rotten Tomatoes and vote, even if you're just a fan. But there isn't the vetting process like there is with critics. So I, I usually wouldn't care about it. The reason why I care about it is because so many other people are taking this Rotten Tomatoes number as now canon. Yeah. So the problem is, if you are going to be a number that is so seriously taken by the movie-going community as a whole, then it's incumbent upon Rotten Tomatoes to say, okay, well, are we allowing just anybody, you know, any person, any animal, any bot to vote on how they feel about the movie? Or do we have to have some sort of vetting process just to prove that you're a real person and not just an egg on Twitter? Well, I think that's fair to possibly bring up as a larger discussion, but I think these... And that's fair both ways, by the way. Wait, wait, right, if, right. Wait, wait, if there's a, negative. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, if, right. if everybody says they love a movie, the yeah, critics yeah. are like, yeah, maybe you should vet somewhere because there could be a middle ground. Well, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, CinemaScore well, has the... more value, mm -hmm. is that it is specifically a certain amount of people that are polled after exiting their mm -hmm. screening on on Friday night, which is why the cinema score does tend to reflect weekend one to two drop fairly accurately. I have other go, things to go, say Ro before Roka. <laughs> go, go, go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Anybody else? <laughs> right, Anybody else? No, but no. I, I think what you're saying is value. We can look at that and like destruct it. I don't think it's just bots because I think that devalues what people have legitimate criticism sure. about this film. A lot of people feel betrayed about what they did with the Luke character about him. We waited two years and he just throws a lightsaber over his shoulder. A lot of people were mad about this. Snoke gets no background, then Snoke gets cut in half and we're done with him. A lot of people about issues with this. Raised parents are nobody. We spent years, to, you know, figuring out who's raised parents, who's not raised parents. Like who is who is Snoke, who isn't Snoke. What's the thing? And in a way, you kind of spat in the face of the hardcore Star Wars fans by doing this. And yes, you made a choice. You made dramatic choices, bold choices, and I respect that. You know, a sec I think you were right. A second time I went to see it, I got to sit back with the audience and enjoy the film a bit more because I knew the destroyed choices that were coming. But as a Star Wars fan, a hardcore going in, I'm like, why are you doing this? What's the point? And I get the overall narrative. And then what's Canto Bite all about? Why are you even having that? Because all the reason it, it almost seems self-serving for Ryan Johnson to have that in the movie because it sets up the kid who might be the lead in his own trilogy that he's gonna do. So a lot of that the Canto Bite is prequel stuff in what is in essence you're trying to create another version of the original trilogy. It's prequel stuff and it was so unnecessary. So I think that turned off a lot of the fans. So it could be bots, it could be this the cinema, all that kind of stuff. But I think there are legitimate criticisms, and it's not just a vocal minority, because it because there's no such thing as a vocal minority with Star Wars. There's vocal people, period, majority, minority. It's irrelevant. People are very vocal about Star Wars. And you levy legitimate criticisms. My issue is, who told you to spend years of your life debating who Ray's parents are? Did, did the film tell you to do that? Or did you decide That's to tradition. have a conversation with That's a bunch Star of people? Wars tradition, though. Sure, but it doesn't matter. It's not incumbent upon Star Wars to answer all the questions that fans make up about stuff. It's not Star Wars' fault that we thought Snoke might be this huge thing that's going to come back in Episode Nine, or what we decided Luke should have done with a lightsaber mm -hmm. as soon as he got it. That is on the fans. And the problem is, in today's society, we form these own narratives and write our own fan fiction. Wait. And so now, whatever we see, if it doesn't jive with that, we start to say, oh, I didn't like that. We're as opposed to a lot of people enjoying the movie more the second and third and fourth time they see it because they know what's going to happen so now they can just ah and appreciate the story more. Wait, I disagree though because to a degree because I think they they built up the lightsaber by having her hear the voices when she touches it in Force Awakens so the lightsaber means something so that's got to have some kind of resonance you can't lay the groundwork in your own film and then go oh we're just going to throw yeah, it the, the lightsaber did its job it there's, led her to Luke Skywalker be something here that was the job of the lightsaber right what well, it was to get her it, but it gets her into the whole mythology of it and I think the Snoke thing is brought up because we've seen that lay the ground with Palpatine Palpatine and Vader. We saw this, the Sith, the, the power of the two, you know, the rule of two. All of that is there, and we even see it in the prequels when they're talking about Darth Sidious, the legend of Darth Sidious. So all of that is laid within the groundwork of the films that have come before. That's why people got into these things and wrote these things. But your criticism is valid. No one told us to do it, but it is tradition to do it because we've seen it done in the films. Well, that is a problem that I think needs to be addressed with the idea of fan theories, because especially with how powerful the internet and discussion mm. is right now, that is a risk we're going to run with any great franchise. And really, when you think about it, as much as, you know, we did that scoreboard video and yeah I wanted to win the scoreboard video but <laughs> when I watched the movie and none of my expectations came true well some of them came true but really none of them came true in the way that I thought they were going to play out I was so pleasantly surprised 
Canto Bite you bring up, I can't make any excuses yeah, for right. that. To me, that is a glaring weak spot for the movie. But I understand both reactions to Snoke. I just fell on the positive side of that because that to me is a perfect example of looking at something and assessing it where how can whatever we do with this character better serve some other characters and the franchise going forward. And the demise of Snoke, I think, took Kylo Ren to a whole nother level. Now, what I will say, yeah. though, too, when hearing all these these criticisms and concerns, I think that both Mark and Roka make really good points here. Now, I think that when you go into a Star Wars theorist, right, you're absolutely right. No one's telling you that you have to spend all this time yeah. and be you're choosing to get disappointed if the payoff doesn't work for you the way you want it to. But to Roka's point, that's what Force Awakens kind of asked you to do in a certain aspect. They're like, well, you, it's the same way that Lost set up certain questions that you want to get engaged. They want you to say, why do I care? Why do I care? Why do I care? Now, there are some people that are going to be very satisfied in the fact that it was actually, it wasn't about Snoke. It was about Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren was ultimately the one who was going to be the man in charge. Now, we chose to say who's Snake, is Snake. Is he is Snoke? Is he Darth Plagueis? Is he someone else? And these payoffs didn't happen. I think that the hardcore Star Wars fan that engages all the way through is going to be disappointed more in that type of storytelling than like the casual fan. Now, the casual fan might be thrown off a little bit by some jokes or maybe in tone as compared to the force awakens maybe the tone is a little is a little different i happen to like the tone a little bit more and especially the second time i saw it but i think that the fans criticisms for the most part for fans that were disappointed about certain payoffs are valid in a way and i and i think that the way that um there are ways you to express yourself that are more valid than others and ways that you sh should do it. And I think that the way that you guys are kind of going back and forth or is the way that I would love to see Twitter respond, but that doesn't always happen. But yeah, you, you look at Luke as being a guy on the white side of the force, right? But he had a moment of weakness when he confronted uh, Kylo Ren before he became Kylo Ren. So I'm going to have that right now is that I, I love this movie, but I didn't give it a perfect score either. I have issues with the movie, the biggest one being the Canto Bite scene being the weakest in the film. However, I do appreciate that we got a scene like what we got with Jabba's Palace in Return of the Jedi or Moss Eisley in A New Hope or even something like the Coruscant Barth beginning of Attack of the Clones or what we got in Force Awakens when we went to Moss's place. I like seeing new planets and new things in Star Wars. So the actual casino scene itself, I really liked. I just felt it was a little hitting us over the head with another um, political philosophy we didn't necessarily need in this movie when we got into being animal rights activists for these particular <laughs> animals, because 15 minutes before that, we see Luke spear a fish and go eat it. So it's like, are we only saving the cute, cuddly animals that we like? like, like where are we pork, drawing pork, the line Pork did get that's eaten. A, but you know what I will say, I don't want to get into a, a, a total spoiler. Fish lives matter. This. We've done a lot of spoiler discussions, but the last thing before because it was just a really discussion about the divide between mm. what we see of the critics and the fans here. As a final thought here, as we say goodbye, then we um, all get final thoughts. Then right? we all get final. <laughs> yeah, we all get final. I, I'm asked. That's. I want to start okay, with your final thoughts. Fine. I want to start with you. All get final <laughs> thoughts. So I want to start with Perry here. Perry. So what is it overall? Would you say? Because one of the questions. Let's say it was a bot, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say it was not. Let's say it was something to where the fans themselves that didn't get a chance to see the movies yet didn't have a chance to put that positive score, then why hasn't it changed? Why does it continue? Has it stayed even? Has it stayed um, consistent? Because the argument could be, well, if all these fans actually did like it or if they were their bots, how come they didn't put bots to like it? Or how come they didn't like, or how come the fans that didn't, that they went to see it a second time that loved it so much haven't been attributing their score? How, how, do you def how would you defend that? I definitely lean towards the statistical facts with this because when the news first came out that the audience score was so much lower than the critical score, I basically sat there waiting for that cinema score because I've leaned on cinema score a lot over the years and it does tend to be accurate. I know it only polls a small portion of the population, whereas that audience score has something like over 100,000 votes right now. But I w would like to think that the large majority of the very vocal Star Wars fans that we're talking about, a lot of people that watch the show are very familiar with Rotten Tomatoes. I think that most people voting on Rotten Tomatoes are the passionate fans of these big franchises. Whereas if you're talking about my mom going to see Star Wars, she's not gonna go on Rotten Tomatoes and vote on it after. Mm -hmm. As And the same is true for the large majority of people that are contributing to this $200 million plus opening total. So I think that's the case, but really what it all comes down down to for me, which is why stories like this frustrate me so much. And I mean, really kind of break my heart is 
no matter how you feel about it. And like Ellis, I didn't give it a perfect score. I'll talk negatively about that Canto Bite stuff mm. all day long because I think it was a solid idea that was very poorly executed, sticks out like a sore thumb. But the point is, it is a movie. And the idea of being able to accept somebody who has a different opinion than you, th that needs to start happening more because the idea of someone taking away something that someone else loves, the amount of people out there who are basically trying to convince people who enjoyed this movie not to love it as much and not to have something they appreciate in their lives, that is upsetting and that is just flat out wrong no matter what side of the line you fall on. Okay. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think it's absolutely right. The discussions are fun. That's what we love to do. That's another tradition of Star Wars fans, debating points, debating what happens in the movie, what the merits. Every Star Wars movie has plot holes and issues with character development and what have you. But I think what's important here to me is like our criticisms don't necessarily take away my enjoyment of the film. My issues with the film are my issues with the film. But that uh, from the throne room on, that's maybe the greatest Star Wars film I've ever seen. And so there's so much about this film to uh, support it. The Holdo scene when she goes in the, in the light speed through that shit. I've never seen anything like that in any movie, let alone a Star Wars movie. It, the, and it was so great to watch the audience catch their breath as I caught my breath the first time. These are the things that are positive about them. But in the end, I don't think people's criticisms should be dismissed either. I think it's valid to have these criticisms, have conversations about them, but I also agree with Perry. You cannot denigrate people for liking or hating the movie. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion and feel strongly about it. And as long as you back it up with evidence and, and your actual point of view and not just like sweeping indictments, then you can have constructive conversations about this. Our, I think, I will say, Ryan Johnson's decisions and boldness should be applauded and it should show the way that we need to go with Star Wars. Because you can't say, oh, you, you repeated the same beats of Force Awakens as A New Hope and then be like, oh, you did something new and bold about, I didn't like the, make up your mind. And that's what really needs to happen here. Criticism does not equal destruction of the film. It just means these are things that I didn't like. Doesn't mean I didn't like the film as a, as a whole. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys brought up the love or the hate because I'm as guilty of this as anybody where I think that because I love the Star Wars movie that when I go against people who didn't like it, that I'm fighting for the good side. I'm fighting for the, the, the <laughs> side of justice. There is no good or bad side. It's a matter of how you handle it. And so I try to handle it with class. The only people I will really attack are the ones that you guys pointed out are the ones that are trying to dampen somebody else's enthusiasm for the movie saying you're not a hardcore Star Wars fan if you like this scene or that scene or what that's the kind of stuff I think needs to stop and and maybe it won't maybe this bit only dampens it five percent but even that is going somewhere in the right direction because I feel like this is a great Star Wars movie and I think that a lot of the criticisms that people have with it if you look at it from a different point of view I think that you're going to see that the lightsaber <laughs> served its purpose. The lightsaber was meant to bring Rey to Luke, and once it was there, it was just a thing. It was just some crude matter, as Yoda would say, that does not matter anymore because now we have Luke training Rey, and the Force and the Jedi are about a lot more than just lightsabers. Same thing with Snoke. Snoke was great in the first movie and where he was in this movie because he was a conduit to show us how powerful Kylo Ren actually was with the Force, and I think that proved it. The Canto Bite scene is the weakest, because it really led to nowhere. It led to nowhere. It was kind of a way to give us a nice Benicio Del Toro cameo that didn't pay off the way that I wanted or a lot of other fans wanted to. But overall, I love The Last Jedi, and I think that what we really need to do, and maybe the point of this vid is, we can have great debate. Let's not be beholden to any one particular percentage or score online. Do not let a number tell you how you felt about the movie. Lady Bird's 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. When I saw Lady Bird, I might agree with that, but I'm not letting that number influence me. Let's be cops. It's like 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I saw the movie and thought it was hilarious. Do not let a score or a meter or anybody else tell you how you felt about the movie. Enjoy it or have criticisms about it, but just be you. I agree, and I think that the main thing here is is it's the whether or not to be toxic on when you share your opinion. I think that's the Broca. that is the biggest thing. <laughs> it really it, it, What? No. That is Whoa. that is absolutely just said a whole final thought for nothing. I know. No, it's it's a matter it's it's just on I think Mark hit it when he's just it's a matter on how you do it because to be completely honest, I don't care if you think I should not like the movie. I don't care what you think. I know the way I felt about the movie, nor should you care that I think that you should like the movie if you don't. That is your opinion. That is the way that it should be. Now, however, there's also something to look at when you see, and I think this goes after a lot of what Roku was saying here, when you look at the critic score, and every critic that sees the movie, every critic, 
is not a hardcore Star Wars fan. Mm. A lot of these people, it's very similar to what I said about like um, Iron Man 3. I think if you look at Iron Man 3, like a Shane Black movie, it's a fantastic Shane Black movie. As an MCU movie, it does not work. It is a very different movie. Now, whether or not you want to agree with me or not, that's up to you. But in my opinion, they felt very different in those two things. Now, I think critics, when they look at it as a Ryan Johnson film, it's hard to argue that it's a not a very well, beautiful looking film. It's a structured, it, the guy's a brilliant filmmaker, minus the Canto White stuff. Um, <laughs> but, but the stuff together, now, I think that that negative score that we see comes from what you were saying before, Mark, a lot of these hardcore Star Wars fans, right, that maybe had all these expectations inside of their head, theorizing and whatnot, and it didn't execute the way that you wanted to. I will take issue, and I took issue with you on Movie Talk when you said it the same with what you said. I don't think it's fair to call out the fans for saying, oh, I wanted, I, I want, th that movie was so, was, was such a rehash of episode four, Force Awakens, mm. but now we get something new and they're, they're complaining. I don't think that all the, the criticisms come from it just being something new. Mm -hmm. I think it's a matter of they could have still gotten something new, but it wasn't executed the way that they wanted to, and whether or not that's right or wrong, for this is the filmmaker's decision. But I don't think that it's fair to say to them, well, j you, you didn't like it, so you just didn't want anything new. Maybe they did want something new, they just didn't want it that particular way. I got two, I got two quotes for you. Yeah. One is from George Lucas himself at Star Celebration. He said, I made Star Wars for 12-year-olds. I think everybody should remember mm. that. That Star he Wars, did. at its heart, is a movie and a, and a film franchise I think it's changed made though. to I think please 12-year-olds. It has, but I'll also give you another quote right now from a good buddy of mine, comedian writer on SNL, Eric Marino, who said that the biggest problem he had with the Star Wars prequels was that when he saw them, he was 35. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 I love Eric Marino, by the way, but I, again, I, don't, I think that these movies in general and fandom in general has evolved in a different way. I mean, you look at, also, you look at the MCU, you look at the DCEU, you look at all these different genres. They're not just made for 12-year-olds anymore. I'm not saying that they're not certainly, they're directed at 12-year-olds at for sure a lot of the times, but they're also aimed for adults because this is the business mm -hmm. that we're in. And Star Wars is absolutely one of those things too because the prequels, I think George Lucas was absolutely making those for, for a younger generation. Um, but these movies now, I almost think it would be irresponsible if you just made them for 12 year olds because of the fandom that is attached with it now. Well, this is another conversation. Well, that, that's right. just another point that does pertain to what we're talking about right now is one of the first things that crossed my mind when I started to see this kind of backlash and try to understand why someone would be so devastated to share feelings like that and try to put other people down that I actually really understood is the fact that there's a lot of people out there, you know, I know we can't get too crazy with theories and then be pissed when our expectations with those aren't met, but I'm thinking about all those people that grew up with Luke Skywalker as he right. was in A New Hope and just that feeling of, because I had, it actually, it wasn't Star Wars, but I had movies that I watched repeatedly as a kid that did kind of raise me and shape me as a person to a degree. And, you know, if they didn't like the way things panned out for Luke Skywalker, that could be a, a loss on the same level of a real life loss. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. would understand that kind of reaction to it. Well, and also I think you can't say just 12 year olds if all, if these books that have come out in canon have very adult themes, very adult approaches, very complex approaches to personal relationships and relationships with political leanings, all the stuff that's going on with Leia, where they find out who her father is, like all that stuff is very not he's 12 talking, year olds. He's talking movies. Yeah, but everything is yeah, under canon. Also, everything also, is I, under I the window. I didn't say that these are only to be enjoyed by, by 12 year olds. No, no, you were I'm using the I'm just saying that you quotes. have to remember the genesis of Star Wars yes. is that it's made so kids can enjoy it sure. and kids can appreciate That's it. And so maybe there's things in The Last Jedi that we didn't love, but maybe kids are going to watch that racing sequence on Canto by yeah. and be like, that's mm -hmm. the best part of the movie. Yeah, you're not, and you're the Porg stuff. Yeah, certainly. and oh, so certainly. we want to get so fed up with like, oh, that's stuff. not canon. That's not the way yeah, the Porgs yeah, yeah. works. Just take a breath. These are these are movies to be enjoyed by everybody. Well, that's it. I mean, that's the discussion <laughs> that we have had today, too. Obviously, there is a divide with some fans. Some fans love it. Some fans hate it. There's definitely a divide between the fans that didn't like it and the critics who loved it. As Perry said on Rotten Tomatoes, sitting at a 93%. Um, and then the audience score right now on Rotten Tomatoes at 59%. So will that go up? Will that go down? Only time will tell. And I'm curious to see, because like I said, 
myself as a hardcore Star Wars fan who saw it for a second time and enjoyed it significantly more the second time. Um, and you know, they get the arguments, oh, you're just forcing yourself uh, to, to love it. And I can tell you that's not the case because I went in, I went in skeptical the second time. I went in going, I'm really gonna, there's a lot of this movie that I don't wanna see again because of things that I felt the first time I saw it. And I was, I was wrong in the way that I saw a lot of it. But there was a lot that I didn't like. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a lot of points that Roka made about some of the issues that he had, I, I felt pretty strongly with as well. But I just found out, I found myself enjoying the movie as an overall Star Wars fan. And I couldn't agree with you more that once you get to that throne room scene and on, there's some of the best Star Wars stuff that we've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. But that's up to you guys to decide, up for you guys to debate. Let's see where we're going to get in these comments. Woohoo! Let's go for it. Uh, enjoy. Have some fun. Click the like button. Share it around. Subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. You like this Force Awakens talk? Well, it's not Force Awakens. It's Last Jedi. So, ha, joke's on you. If you like the Last Jedi talk, we've got tons of videos up there that you can check out. There's a cool Snoke video up there. You want to check that out? Maybe you weren't, you didn't love some of the theories. We've got some more theories that might pertain to what we think is going to happen to Snoke in Episode Nine. Go and check that out. Jedi Council. So it's up every Thursday. We had a very special one with SNL alum Bobby Moynihan. We had his spoiler thoughts. That's up there. We had the regular um, just council with him. Tons of tons of videos. Seven questions you might have. The ending explained. Go and browse. And like I said, if you're brand new to the channel, subscribe. And we'll catch you some other time. Just not right now. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.